say that we've got up that this session will be recorded um, and um, if you can put your microphone on mute um, to avoid any background noises. Um, but we do want you to participate in the discussion. So we definitely encourage that. So if you've got a question, please use the chat facility um, uh, or you can join the conversation on social media. This is our first event of our CIRA conference this year, our online conference again. We were hoping to be able to meet in person, but it's not going to be possible. So we've got the hashtag, hashtag CIRACONF21. So if you want to get a conversation going on Twitter, or in social media, you can see our social media on the slide there, please do. Um, really looking forward to this first event today um, and we're just waiting on people coming in and we will start very soon. Um, Oh, I can see some familiar faces looking on the screen here. It's nice to see people. Welcome again to uh, this afternoon's first event of the CIRA conference. Um, and we will get started shortly. Oh, nice to see so many faces and names that I recognize. Nice to be back with the CIRA conference. Just a shame we can't be meeting in person this year. Okay, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our first um, event of our CIRA conference this year, hashtag CIRAConf21. We had hoped to be meeting in person, but unfortunately, that is not going to be possible this year. So we're having a series of online events, starting with our keynote today, and then our networks are leading events across the rest of this week and culminating with our CIRA AGM on Thursday. Um, so please, the Eventbrite links for all of these events are still live. Um, please join us um, and you will find information about the events on our website. So as I said, welcome to hashtag 21 We have our keynote today 
and we are starting and we're really pleased to have um, Dr Pauline Stephen here who is um, started this year as Chief Executive and Register of GTC uh, of, Gen of the General Teaching Council for Scotland and we're really pleased to have her here today and she'll be talking about teacher professionalism and beginning teachers and a great way to start off our week and lead us into continuing to look at international themes as we go through the week. So just a reminder to everybody, we are recording this session. Can you please make sure your microphones are on mute and I will hand straight over um, to Pauline. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat um, and you'll have a chance to ask questions at the end as well. So over to you, um, Pauline, really looking forward to the keynote today. Thank you. Thanks so much, Nicola, and thanks to you and Angela for inviting me. I really appreciate it and I'm looking forward to the discussion today. And I thought I would talk for a bit and then um, I would be really interested in um, really us talking about some of the concepts because I find it really hard still speaking into a computer and not really knowing how things are landing. So it's always good to get a bit of discussion going. So I am, I'm interested in lots of things, but I am particularly interested in the relationship between beginning teachers and accomplished expert and or established teachers. I'll probably describe them on all those ways as, as, as we chat together. But I'm really interested in the influence of expert established teachers on um, the professional identity development of beginning teachers. And I think that how they work together can really define what teacher professionalism means and in turn defines what a trusted system is. Um, and I think teacher professionalism is at the heart of a trusted system for me. In Scotland, I think that's demonstrated through an established set of shared standards and ethics. Um, teachers' commitment to ongoing learning and reflection on their learning, including, you know, the impact of their learning on themselves, on their others and on learners. So through that framework of professional standards spanning the teacher journey, COPAC, the Code of Professionalism and Conduct, and Professional Update, I think the infrastructure is already there to scaffold professional identity and growth. And I think an outcome of this structure can be argued to be the development and maintenance of a trusted profession and therefore system. And for me, trust works in necessary tension with regulation, with all teachers regulated at the point of entry to the register to ensure their suitability for inclusion, but also a system being in place for when trust has been breached and how, how to manage that. So I'm really interested in the maintenance and development of trust and a trusted system. And I believe there's a critical role for ongoing teacher learning in the enhancement of trust. And in that space, I think there's a lot to consider in terms of the interaction between beginning and established and expert teachers. And I think the time is right to explore what continuum of learning can be built from initial teacher education through a teacher's career. And we would benefit from further consideration together about approaches to ongoing teacher learning and the ones that we privilege and promote and the structures that are in place to, to support ongoing teacher learning. So I want to talk a little bit about how I think individuals connect to the system because I think what happens with an individual beginning teacher in terms of what support and challenge they experience tells us much about our system as a whole I think teacher identity comes about from the interaction between an individual and their context and identity is important in that space. How we um, shape our identity really reflects our commitments and um, shapes what we do. What teachers think, value and do really, really matters to me. And the policy infrastructure is set out in the framework that I spoke about earlier. And that all of those is at heart the commitment to the professional values of trust and respect, integrity and social justice. So how we use that framework, how it's enacted in context, influences teacher identity. And I think that makes the interaction between beginning and established expert teachers critical in scaffolding beginning teacher identity. I think what they do together create a space for the enhancement of teacher professionalism 
as well as building individual teacher identity and helping trust and arguably um, providing the privilege of a system of self-regulation in Scotland. An example really of that privilege is if we take a minute just to think about how entry to the profession of teaching in Scotland is managed. So through the General Teaching Council, funded by individual teachers, there's a nationally agreed accreditation process and consulted upon ways of, of, of doing that. And consider, I think, too, some of the myths that we have in our system. So for instance, a myth that I hear, hear a lot is that GTCS only counts some forms of professional learning. Some are more important than others. And there are several myths and legends with regards to the requirement and entitlement of ongoing teacher learning. Probably they have come about as a consequence in part of the complexity of our system. We have a system with multiple layers and levels of policy interpretation and enactment. And our system is complex and perhaps we sometimes try to manage our complexity by privileging consensus over innovation, looking for consistency rather than embracing local variation in response to different learner and teacher needs. And I think we sometimes hold different notions of policy intentions and um, things like in, when we talk about empowerment and agency, are we all meaning the same thing when we use those words? So the development of teacher identity is, of course, happening all the time in a system of complexity and is shaped, too, by contextual responses of established and expert teachers and how they go about managing that complexity. And teaching is everything about teaching is complex. Teaching is about people. So its starting point is complex. And I really like Buchanan's 2020 description of teaching that it's a complex commitment to people, complex intellectual work, complex relational work, a complicated search for sometimes uncomfortable truths and a recognition in that space too that learning is complex. And so all of those things together mean that teaching involves complex discernment. And when you consider that along with the work of Mills and Goose, who talk about constant informed and complex decision making, teachers knowing how to choose, what to think, do and care about most at that point in time for those learning learners becomes a fundamental part really of, of teacher identity. I also like um, the work of Deborah Kidd, who talks about um, complex needn't always be complicated. And as a system, we need to be about humanity, compassion and wisdom in pursuit of our shared big ambitions. And we know that what happens in our schools doesn't do so in a vacuum. And our shared ambition of excellent education is probably complemented by a desire to support the development of strong families and healthy communities. I don't think those things can necessarily be separated out. So when we're thinking about improving outcomes for learners and during this um, interesting time of educational reform, there is perhaps a need for some debate amongst us all about education in Scotland, for whom and whose purposes. That is where in the balance of human and economic drivers to education it, should our curriculum be focused. To add a bit more complexity on to, to that too, it's maybe uh, appropriate to think of the contribution of further education and the impact of different approaches to the learning of lecturers, especially in the context of exploring increased diversity in the senior phase curriculum, which is so much part of our current thinking as we're all um, thinking about responding to the reform. Now, uh, McMurray in the 1950s, long time ago, Murray House Lecture would, would offer that the purpose of education is to learn to be human and to learn to live in community. So excellent education is arguably the driver for the other big goals that I look to, how to, how to support strong families and how to create healthy communities. So teaching and teachers really matter. And I think we need to start by thinking about what the foundations are to that effective education that really, really matters. And I like the work that OECD reported in 2017 that it's about effective education is about confidence te te teachers, innovation, 
and enabling leadership. So my interest in beginning teachers is about how does this journey to confidence start? I think it starts with self-awareness and continues with critically informed teachers and teacher learning. And I think we need to consider together how the journey to achieving critical discernment is shaped from the start of a career in teaching. And we know there is at the start of that journey much to do and to know and to care about. And I think we need to embrace um, understanding the pressure on teacher making with the focus on initial teacher education and think about the complex systems contributions to the start of the journey to becoming a teacher. So to explain that a little bit more, the first few years of teaching are critically important. I don't think anybody would take exception to that. I think there is a need for strategic and systemic practical support for self-organized teacher networks and to consider how best in that space to harness the power of established and expert teachers to support the learning of others. For me, this directly relates to the creation of a more positive narrative about initial teacher education and beginning teachers. I think we sometimes find ourselves in a place where issues are perceived, any issues really perceived to be with beginning teachers and their readiness to teach are sometimes deemed to be a result of an element of missing learning in their initial teacher education. And over time, I think there have been various influences to address what specific groups believe is essential for inclusion in ITE programmes. I think we need to consider that with the structural and systemic issues that influence this narrative. And by that, what I mean is the prioritisation and availability of support for student and beginning teachers in schools can sometimes be challenging to provide in a consistent and holistic way within our current structures. There may be a need to reframe an understanding that initial teacher education is indeed that initial, and whilst it obviously must continue to develop, innovate, innovate and grow to provide the best introduction to a career in teacher, it's necessary to rethink the within school support systems to enhance support and challenge for student and early career teachers. And this is not new. For some time, there has been a desire and an ambition in Scottish education to realise a continuum of high quality professional learning for teachers, spanning initial teacher education through probation and into the early career phase and beyond. And we know the work of Donaldson and the work of Ford and others in that space. But maybe now some of the foundations are being laid to realise that ambition. We know we have the professional standards for Scotland's teachers as the framework that support what it means to become, to be and to grow. And um, at the heart of um, that rationale is the need to provide depth to support teachers' professional growth throughout their early career. Right now, on successfully completing initial teacher education, the majority of student teachers in Scotland opt to complete their probation via the teacher induction scheme. And that is a robust national programme which is recognised internationally and probably maybe one that we don't celebrate enough. But TIS is structured around a core programme of high quality professional learning and a coaching and mentoring approach. And it's been observed that many early career teachers can experience a bit of a slump in relation to their professional growth when they move on from that structured and supportive scheme. Early career teachers at that point are effectively crossing a boundary and that's really influential in their ongoing development and um, their personal development and their development um, as their identity really as a teacher. The General Teaching Council has been of the view for a while now that a vision needs to be developed to build capacity across the system, which aims to bridge that gap and realise the ambition of establishing a high quality continuum of professional learning spanning teachers' early careers. The pandemic has been a pretty unlikely ally for us in um, creating positive movement in this area. And um, we have had further enhancements to uh, the support that's available for probationer teachers. 
And we have established a fledgling professional learning program called Stepping Stones that's there to um, support teachers beyond probation. This program has inbuilt coaching support and it's delivered virtually. And it was probably rightly a very reactive move by um, a, a partnership of the Scottish education system to support early career teachers in the early stages of the pandemic. But it's now time for us to take our learning from this work to formulate a self-sustaining strategy. So taking a moment just to have a think about post-pandemic and the implications for teaching in a post-pandemic world, world rather, um, Herb Biesta recognised the importance of how and why teachers and teaching matter um, in his um, book, The Rediscovery of Teaching. The epilogue of that book is entitled Giving Teaching Back to Education. But we know that there are some examples that directly contrast that. Um, Sugata Micha, a computer scientist and an educational theorist, makes a plea for minimal, minimally invasive education, a self-organizing system that does not require teachers or teaching as we know it. Now, in his prize-winning TED Talk of 2013, he asks us to help him make a, such a school in the cloud. I personally would not know where to start, but what would constitute teacher professionalism in Biesta's worldview and Sugata Mitra's worldview would be almost really very different. So cautioning that teacher professionalism may need to start building a case to justify why human teachers and the teaching they offer are indispensable. Hannan and Peterson in their book Thrive, The Purpose of Schools in a Changing World, emphasise the urgency to reconsider the purposes and outcomes of education. So they suggest that national narratives that are focused on political and economic competitiveness can now be seen as woefully inadequate in the light of the enormous challenges our species faces. So instead, they propose that the new purpose of education needs to be about how we learn to thrive in a transforming world. And examining what it means to thrive, they insist that it must happen at four independent levels and none of those can be ignored. So whether that's at a global level, at a societal level, at an interpersonal level or at an intrapersonal level. So our current context of reform provides an opportunity to consider how best to help beginning, and maybe all, teachers to thrive. What do confident teachers look like post-pandemic? We believe we need a strategy for beginning teachers in that space. And it must aim to support early career teachers without taking a deficit stance. Instead, recognising their strengths and key fe features of the strategy need to be about co-constructing, nurturing a connected professional learning community, privileging inquiry approaches, and really such a strategy should aim to support the development of skills to manage complexity. How to make that constant, informed and complex decision making. That complexity is no more or less diminished in early career teacher development. And it appears that the overwhelming recognition of the need for a supportive professional learning continuum has temporarily resulted in a raft of support and professional learning opportunities targeted at early career teachers being offered at different levels of the system. The system is again really busy helping, but we've got to ask ourselves to what impact we know that multiple offers can duplicate themes and compete for attendance in, in a way that's really not sustainable. So pandemic responses like stepping stones that are never going to be a silver bullet. They are part of the groundwork in preparation to, to um, a more sustainable um, approach. The infrastructure, support, provision and expectation needs to be in place to develop confident teachers provide the space for innovation and enable leadership as part of a more systemic and structured whole system approach. And I want to take that idea of, well, that rather the OECD's idea of enabling leadership being central to effective education for a minute, because the aspiration 
truly is for leadership at all levels, as outlined in Teaching Scotland's Future and the refreshed um, suite of professional standards. The expectations of being a teacher in Scotland, um, part of the professional standards, involves teachers making a commitment to living the professional values and engage in lifelong learning, reflection, inquiry, leadership of learning and collaborative practice as key aspects of their professionalism. And that's enhanced by an expectation that all teachers have opportunities to be leaders of learning for and with children, young people, colleagues within and beyond their communities. In fact, enabling leadership of all will be a central theme in formulating a vision of what is a desired and a strategy for beginning teaching um, and uh, what needs to change. Key actors from across the system need to be involved, but so do early career teachers themselves, because developing a strategy like that won't happen on its own. We know much already about early career professional learning and programmes are already in place. Partnerships and um, partnerships that are known and partnerships that are new, partnerships with bodies such as CIRA are essential for sharing knowledge and ideas and creating third spaces. Indeed, I would argue that one of the foundational leadership skills is moving beyond collaboration into a space that's more better described as creating collaborative expertise or creating collaborative intelligence. And that involves growing others, sharing knowledge, along with recognising that every conversation that we have together is an opportunity for change. Creating such a strategy is not going to be without challenge, not least ensuring that in the development of it and in the implementation of it, links are made and sustained across the system at every level. That's going to create a little bit of discomfort, but tackle that with a great deal of positivity and breaking down some barriers through collaboration. Part of that collaboration must consider how cultures can be influenced to detach the concept of leadership from roles to become situated in practice. And in the practice of all teachers without privileging leadership pathways out with the classroom. To realise an effective, sustainable continuum, we must always consider what is happening in initial teacher education, the teacher induction scheme, and ensure that the role and contribution of local authorities, regional improvement collaboratives and universities is um, made in developing a strategy and given equal, equal and adequate weight. We also probably need to um, explore the potential barriers um, in creating such a vision. Maybe we need to tackle the inherent conservatism of Scottish education. Is the system ready to embrace support and enact a professional learning continuum for early career teachers? Can the system currently cope with the realisation of the aspirational dimensions of the leadership expectations embedded in the standards for all teachers, including our early career teachers? And we know that there is some evidence against readiness in the narratives from students students and teachers, which do reflect a tension between over direction and independence by um, supporter mentor teachers in response to engaging with arguably more articulate, knowledgeable and assertive early career teachers. So I've got to ask the question of teacher leadership and leadership at all levels is widely understood, embraced and lived across the system. A cultural change is arguably going to be required to enable and accept early career teachers to be perceived as leaders and for the wider systems and schools in which those teachers operate to be ready to support them to exercise that leadership. And we know that both the micro system and the macro system are at play here and the nature of partnerships and collaborations of key actors across the system will be crucial in supporting this change. This comes back again to the expectation that all teachers are leaders within the Scottish professional standards and the argument for this continuum for all early career teachers. We probably have to ask the question too, are early career teachers ready for the system? Teacher identities are continually developing throughout the course of their career. The becoming to being stage and onwards through the early career phase could be argued as being pivotal as developing as a leader and as a professional. 
A high quality continuum of professional learning is crucial to that development. And that needs to encompass both a knowledge element and support to develop professional dispositions related to the professional values. And we need to work to sustain that from ITE through early career and beyond. So what then, this, what then the role of accomplished, established and expert teachers? Well, I think one of their roles in this space is modeling self-evaluation. I think teachers who know themselves well, who reflect on their learning and their impact, really demonstrate the importance of self-awareness. They identify their strengths and development needs, being clear about where they need to develop further. And I think that focus on self and the planning and evaluating of learning supports teachers to make quick and correct decisions from moment to moment about their learners, to assess and implement different solutions and evaluate their impact. Beginning teachers benefit from established teachers making this largely individual and internal process explicit to support reflection and criticality as they move from, from reflecting in a non-practice to reflecting through practice. The aim though is not for established teachers to create prodigies, instead they should be able to somehow support and mentor and coach thinking and criticality with the early career teachers they support. Fundamental learning for the beginning teacher is to navigate the micro politics of their schools and the macro politics of the education system with confidence. And how each individual does that is just that, an individual process. And self-evaluation is of course embedded with feedback. Do teachers know how to ask for feedback, know how to take the feedback and know how to ask for help when they need it? Teachers need to, to access deep knowledge and learning throughout their careers. Teaching relies on highly specialist knowledge and skills. And there's a potential here for a strategy based on the learning from stepping stones to frame that learning journey for beginning teachers. There continues to be a need to consider the place of and space for master level, master's level learning for all teachers and the implications for individuals and the system of the, the timing in which such learning is, is um, undertaken. And during this time of education reform, a productive alignment across policy, theory, research and practice seems a bit more possible. However, reforms that don't align with teachers' own professional perspectives on what constitutes good teaching and what it means to be a good professional will affect a sense of self-efficacy and agency. Teacher voice in this space is therefore critical in demonstrating and advocating for the role of teacher professionalism. Teachers don't only service needs, we define them. Teachers are not merely implementers of policy, they enact and create policy in their direct work with their learners, their colleagues and their partners. Any development of beginning teachers requires the support of established and expert teachers. Accomplished teachers know and they need the space to share what works for whom, when and how providing conceptual frameworks and clear pedagogical strategies. Expert teachers create the conditions that support development of strong teacher identity and are effective coaches, as well as knowing the importance of coaching for their own development. And established and expert teachers are skilled in having difficult professional conversations and promote critical collaboration. Effective professional learning and personal development is central to supporting the work of established and expert teachers in the work that they do with their learners and colleagues, as well as supporting the work that they do in supporting beginning teachers. What the teachers do together promotes well-being and learning. It requires and values highly specialist knowledge and skills, and it requires relationships of authority and trust, which I believe together overall justify our system of self-regulation underpinned by our shared frameworks, where there is a requirement and an entitlement to ongoing teacher learning. Sachs and Mockler talk about that under the right conditions, teacher learning will be inquiry orientated, personal and sustained, individual and collaborative, needing to be supported by school cultures of inquiry and be evidence-based in cultures where the complex nature of teachers' world of learning and teaching is valued and where simple questions provoke thoughtful actions. So to finish, 
Teacher professionalism is our way of being. We already have a very strong foundation of teacher professionalism. This is underpinned by what the OECD has previously described as an inspiring set of professional standards. And those professional standards with professional values at the centre support and promote collaborative professionalism, leadership, inquiry and professional learning. The profession's identity is firmly rooted in our values, our beliefs and our dispositions. The educational experiences of all our learners are shaped by the values and dispositions of all those who work to educate them. A commitment to the professional values um, underpin our relationships, our thinking and our professional practice. We know what teachers think, do and value really matters and that frameworks are in place to support. As we move to post-pandemic working and being, there is, I believe, a need and an opportunity to consider again how these frameworks are best enacted in practice. In particular, the interaction between beginning and established expert teachers is critical in enhancing teacher professionalism and to continue to shape professional identity, both for individuals and for the system. Teacher ethics are central in that space because how values are enacted through what teachers choose to do and not to do is important. To support beginning teachers to thrive, a strategy and a narrative of teacher learning could be built across ITE, probation and beyond, with the aim of developing confidence, providing space for innovation and enabling leadership. Crucial to the success of any framework are existing teachers, and their contextual influence in the building of teacher identity and their expertise in scaffolding the continuum of learning. But the aim needs to be for a self-sustaining strategy and a self-sustaining system. And that means a focus on every teacher's learning, a, will a willingness to collaborate and co-create, readiness to take some informed risks with inquiry as stance, adaptability, and an openness to what is learned along the way at each level of our system. Collaborative sharing of our knowing, doing and caring is the starting point in recognising the excellence that's already around us. And from there, together, we build. So I'm going to leave it there, Nicola. Um, I will leave it there. I look forward to some, some chat. <laughs> Oh, thank you very much, um, Pauline, and um, the virtual clap, is there, so thank you very much. Uh, that was really interesting. I've got so many notes here. I was just arranging my notes into thinking about where you've taken us and, and uh, in your keynote. I think, you know, saying there about that narrative of teacher learning um, is so interesting in, in, in bringing that together. And it was good to hear you talking about teaching and, and teachers matter, thinking about individuals in the system, um, recognising teaching and learning as complex, which I, I couldn't agree with more. I think it, it, that's so important to highlight that, but also indicating there's frameworks that we have already that might help us, particularly, you know, as you see, that journey to confidence of beginning teachers um, so that they're critically informed um, and they're engaging in that learning process and the role of um, what you're describing as expert teachers in supporting that, pro that process and recognising the importance and centrality of teacher voice in all of this. Um, and that, discuss of that, that point you're raising around leadership that at, at all levels and thinking about how we bring that through. Um, I think there's some so much to, to discuss there. And I think it, as people are, um, ruminating over that and um, please if you've got any questions put them in the chat or if you want to a question to Pauline directly yourself please just raise your hand um, and I will share that and bring people in um, to ask questions just a, a personal reflection from me Pauline and what you're seeing while we're waiting for some questions coming in I, this couldn't have fitted better actually I was in university today working with our final year um, physical education students actually and we had a wonderful session today where they were presenting their vision so the course that they're doing is all about what's their vision for teaching and learning how are they going to move that forward and a lot of what you were saying really resonated so strongly and we had such a, a, a great time <coughs> hearing them talk about 
their peer vision, how they would enact that, why they thought that, um, and seeing that, that that leadership that you were talking about there coming in at that level as well of them thinking, what's my vision and how I'm going to move that forward. So um, it was it just linked in very well for me. It was really good to hear that. Nicola, I think so, there's something that we need to think about in there about um, consistency and variation. And I think yeah. it's how, how do we how do we become more comfortable with variation that, that a teacher is creating something with their learners that's right for that context, th those learners, that situation. And therefore it looks a bit different to what's happening in the classroom down the road. And there's something culturally, I think it'd be really good to embrace, it's, you know, I suppose probably because we're all thinking about education reform and thinking we've got to get this questionnaire response in by the end of the week. But there's something about consistency versus variation yeah. that I'm not sure that we're we're all um, debating enough to understand what we mean about that. I agree. I think having that that and hearing our students, Dave, they had to work together on the vision. So there was two that their own. They had to work together and hearing them talk about where they had similarities, differences, and it was a healthy sense of why they could justify why we might see something differently in context and experiences that they've had. So I think that's really important. Um, starting to see some questions coming in in the chat. Um, so we'll have a look at those just now. Um, there's a point coming in here about professionalism is stressed robustly in initial teacher education programmes, as well as development of teacher identity. And as you see, initial teacher education is initial. The initial stages for some students is deconstructing what they think a teacher is or is not. Um, absolutely, I couldn't agree more with this point. So for some, this is painful as it can bring in security or vulnerability. Are you, have you got any thoughts on that? And I think it's a good point there about, you did talk about that continuum and, and initial teacher be, teacher education being that initial point. Yeah, I, 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 really res, I really reflect on that too, Mary, because I think there is, um, I think there are some structural and systemic things that get in the way. So sometimes um, I completely appreciate that sort of unpicking that individual human might have to do about, I'm putting myself through this learning experience. Who am I? What did I think this would be? Has it, you know, all of those things are, are in the mix there. And that is a process that for some is shorter and for some is longer. And this is where I'm coming from with this, Mary. I think we need to really think about how the system works together to support beginning teachers, because just because the sort of ITE bit is tick and under the belt, we we're, we're still have to find structural and systemic ways for supporting very beginning teachers and then taking them through a process. And I think really practical things sometimes get in the way of that, you know, like availability in schools, just really boring things to do with you know is there a member of staff that can be released in order to prioritize support for student and beginning teachers i think there's lots of opportunity there though that we could be discussing and debating together about what such a continuum would look like um, and i i suspect that you know what mary describes in her comment happens to teachers a lot further down the road too you know when they've been in the job for some time and they're they're suddenly realizing is this am i doing this the right way and where is my confidence and i think we've got to get smarter about all different aspects of the system having an honest chat about it and then working out what the collective action is it's not something universities could fix on their own you know HEIs can fix on their own or schools can fix on their own it's complicated, isn't it? Because it involves a bit of everybody coming up with new new ways of being. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Do you have anything else wanted to add there, Mary, or anybody else on no, that point? It, it, nothing more to add apart from yeah, I, I absolutely agree, and I, and I think there's there's um, hopefully further opportunities for further conversation about this. Thank you. Thank you. So I can't see any hands up just now. So I'll go to a next question in the chat because we've got a couple in there. Um, and time will run away with me before I know it if I stay on one topic. So I'm going to go into another question. And this is one actually I was thinking about was this um, Stuart's highlighting about the, the importance of expert teachers. And I, 
I was actually thinking about what do we mean by expert teachers it is another element of that that we could start to sort of think about and discuss and put out there. But Stuart was asking, thinking about the importance of our expert teachers supporting early career, but is that all, would that not be all teachers? And how do you see the system developing to ensure all teachers have the access, time and space to engage in this, um, particularly as um, Stuart's highlighting here, perhaps in small or remote schools that that might be more difficult? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. I had the pleasure of meeting Stuart last Thursday in real life in Edinburgh. It was very exciting. So good to hear from you, Stuart. I, um, I deliberately fudged during my chat when I, I use established, accomplished and expert interchangeably <laughs> because I don't think that we have, um, we all know what we mean when we use those labels to describe teachers. So I completely agree with Stuart about this is about what all teachers need and could benefit from. I would like to think that some of the more recent commitments to do with uh, contact time that we'll see coming down the line, that maybe some of us need to be ready to say, right, what does that mean for how, what does that mean for how that time is used for teacher learning? And I think that could be complemented by a framework that takes folk through beginning years. And I think sometimes, I, Stuart and I had a conversation about this last week, but I think sometimes when I say that, people think I am meaning more centralization. And that's not what I'm meaning. I'm actually meaning the opposite, but I mean that there needs to be a framework that, I don't know if legitimizes is the right word, but prioritizes the fact that you're never finished, there's always more, and here are the ways that you can go and get more. So whether that is um, uh, support about well-being or whether that is support about subject specific, you know, um, how to how to add on to uh, your understanding from your original degree if you're a subject specialist, where do you go to get that support? So I think there needs to be strategy about it, Nicola and Stuart, not it's this and it looks like this in this narrow box and we'll control it over here so I completely agree with Stuart Nicola that's that's a rambling I agree with Stuart we've got to get serious about time and space and if you look at every year when we do the PU survey from from folk it comes back every time time and space time and space what are the barriers so now is the time to get smart I think about some of the solutions to that yeah, I think, yeah, it's interesting you saying that and it almost think, it links to what you said about context and looking at the context and not, as you're saying, a centralisation, but looking at how do we deal with this in this context and how can we support that with the frameworks that you mentioned. I can see that kind of coming coming together. I'm going to, I'm going to move on to another question just to keep us moving on. So just because these little bits of food for thought that I think are going to be ruminating for some time with us. Um, so next we've got um, Aileen Kennedy asking a question about um, is there a way to address the tension between the individualistic approach to accountability via professional standards and professional update and the apparent system aspiration towards collaborative work? Thanks, Nicola. Thanks, Aileen. Yeah, I think I think this is the this is the one that would be great to open up a really good collaborative conversation around about because I think there are some necessary tensions in that space and we probably need together to get better at embracing the tension you know that it's it's neither one thing nor the other so if I give a practical example I very much believe that we should be all working to increase trust in the profession and trust for the profession because you have trust does not mean that you don't have regulation and because you have regulation doesn't mean you don't trust it's about how these things work together Ailey's question is specifically talking there too about accountability and I think that my this is a Pauline view a Pauline view is that we use the word accountability to mean different things and sometimes we use it more to mean um, a feeling of top-down political accountability 
rather than our accountability as learners, um, rather as teachers with our learners. So I think there's loads of unpicking in the comment that, that Aileen has made about that. And that's where some of the gold is to some of the solutions, because actually I would argue what individual teachers do through professional update has a system impact of us having a self-regulating system because of that investment in, in teacher professionalism. So I think we need to understand that more together. Um, but I think there, there's a raft of excellent conversation to be mined in that about how we can do it more and what some of the stories are that we need to share in that space. I don't know if that helps, Aileen. You probably have the answer to this, so you know, <laughs> <laughs> it'd be good to, to get some feedback. I wish I did. Um, <laughs> I should say I don't. Um, I would just say in response to that that I completely agree that accountability shouldn't be used as a pejorative term, and I think sometimes we let it go. We let other people force us to account for ourselves because the system doesn't at the moment have the space or the, it doesn't encourage us to account from bottom up. So. I'll let you know if I get the answer, but don't hold your breath. So thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Aileen. Yeah, so many points being raised here that are conversation starters, as you said, um, Pauline, that points for us to think about and food for thought. And moving on to another couple of questions coming up here um, from ML. It's, first of all, thinking about, you said it's necessary to rethink the within school support for teacher education. Can you say a bit more about what, what that might look like, both for initial teachers and early career teachers? And I think that hits on some of the points that we, we've discussed um, earlier, but perhaps you can expand on that a bit more. Sure. Thanks, ML. Good to hear from you. And um, it's for me, it's a bit about schools are very, very busy places. We know that lots happen and Julie's got a point there too about yeah. post COVID, um, you know, um, sometimes it's about dealing with what's right in front of our faces and that that is understood. But there have been some, um, some schools and some uh, local authorities who have been experimenting with different ways to support beginning teachers. So whether that is prioritizing um, the release of people in the local authority whose job it is to go and ensure that student and beginning teachers are being well supported, that they've got what they need, that they are being appropriately, um, or they're, they're in the right place on that continuum of coaching or mentoring, depending on their progress, all of those kinds of things. I think that's what I mean. I think it would be really good to start thinking about what does serious support for beginning teachers in school look like? Let's not just assume it can happen on the edge of somebody's desk with when they have got very, very important other jobs to do. I'm not, I'm not saying it's more important than other things. It's as important as lots of other things. And so it's how do we prioritize that and how do we build something a bit more structural that allows that to happen. I don't have the, the, the idea in my head, Nicola. I think that's an idea we need to come up with together to experiment about what kind of support would work. Yeah, thanks, Pauline. And I think we can see some, you know, you mentioned coaching and mentoring, and we're seeing that coming through more and, and looking at how we're supporting teacher learning as well. And we're seeing that coming through as well. So yeah, definitely. Anything else, ML, you'd like to come back on or add in there? So the next question is a pretty big one, <laughs> I think, for us all to have a think about is just thinking about that, the role of teacher educators, and it's leading on from, from what you were saying there, Pauline, what's the role of teacher educators in developing and supporting teacher learning and professional learning? Um, yeah, and thinking about, because you mentioned thinking about that, the master's level aspect that we're thinking about, but not just that. So um, what is teacher educators role in that? Yeah, I think I, 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 so for me, there's a bit of this thinking that aligns with Aileen's point about individual and system. I, I think we use words like the education system 
and I don't always know what we're talking about when we when we talk about that. Um, so there is something about how the different component parts of the system are, you know, what's their uniqueness and where in the Venn diagram do they come together and offer um, different lenses in which to see things. I don't know if that makes any kind of sense, Nicola, but there's, there's, there's a bit about um, valuing the uniqueness we all have. So being a teacher educator and working for a higher education institute is a different job as supporting beginning teachers in a school context. That's okay. It's meant to be different. But where do they come together to cross over that we can do more, learn more, and uh, yeah, have different approaches in that space? That for us, for me, there's all, I always come back to um, positive stories, Nicola. What's the positive story? Could we please get away from the story of these teachers are not finished off and they've not popped into a classroom and they're not just bang on ready. Um, so there's something wrong with teacher education. They, they should do this element and this element and this element. I think we need a much more positive narrative about beginning teachers. And that would be helped by bits of the system working together in different ways and having honesty about where our relative strengths and weaknesses are and how we can help in that space. So I don't have the answer, but what's one we need to talk about? I think so, yes. And I'm just actually looking ahead and Paul's actually put in the chat that perhaps gets us thinking about that, that an yeah. approach might be to, 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 to remove that ITE induction, ECD, and move to a system of teacher learning that embraces longer periods of time perhaps looking at the first five years with support to move forward and experience and with support from a variety of people and groups. And I know myself hearing um, uh, Brent Davis and Dennis Samara speaking um, a number of years ago now talking about the Canadian context and they were putting forward at that point this longer term view of teacher learning that it wasn't a case of you went in for your initial teacher education and it was a set period of time but it was seen as a longer term and there was more in, in, in interaction between the school and the university. So there was a backwards and forwards of that, the ideas coming uh, together and looking at it in that longer term. So, um, yeah, And yeah. you know what, I think we've got elements in the system, Nicola, that have been around a long time. I mean, there's a lot about the teacher induction scheme that's great, uh, but it's now about 20 years old. So perhaps now is the time to, you know, consider approaches that are a bit different like like Paul suggests and I'm trying to get a hold of if anybody has this I would very much appreciate it I am trying to get a hold of what I believe is a framework Ontario have developed for beginning teachers that is I think a little bit like Paul describes you know a bit of a kind of continuum of learning for the first few years and I'd be interested to know what the ongoing um, teacher educator interaction is through that so um i think there are other things out there too that's worth us taking a look at and what would be nice nicola is proposals of solutions in this space that have a starting point of being cross-sectoral yeah well so it's, it's it's not like there's pauline from the gcs banging on about this that and that and the universities have a very different view about what might happen. I think we have to do the hard work together now and come up with joint solutions in that space. Yeah, thanks, uh, Pauline. And it reflect what you're seeing reflects. Angela's just picking up saying it's challenging, as you said, the conservatism, conservatism uh, I'll put my teeth back in, conservatism with a small C of the established structures of education and teaching and you know and policy and yet, yet we the OECD bemoaned the two-term dash and exams but we've got the 10-month PGD dash followed by the induction year you know that we, we're we're looking at putting things into tightly squeezed spaces which actually could we be looking at elongating that and looking at it as you said learning is complex it's a more long-term process so yeah and also that there's something in there too Nicola but sometimes when you see the professional standards used as a almost yes yes checklist check right that's the SBR right boom onto the SFR boom it doesn't um it doesn't have the tone of professional growth around about it so perhaps there's some way we can use the professional standards to consider that journey absolutely thanks Pauline 
I'm aware that we're coming towards the end of the session. So any other questions that people want to raise? Um, if you want to ask a question, you can raise your hand or if there's anything else, a point or a thought you want to raise in the chat, please do. Yeah, that's an interesting matter yeah, there. And I definitely. think there, there is something that is linked to what ML says about how good we are at taking informed risks and working together to come up with different ways of doing. And I think in Scottish education, we're good at consensus. And that's a strength. That's a strength. But sometimes we privilege that over taking some chances about doing some different ways of being and doing. Um, so I think that's a really interesting idea. Um, it's how you, it's back probably to our attention between consistency and variation, isn't yeah. it? And how comfortable we are with that. I think so. And it, it reflect. I mean, Mel picked up and said that it, it, the collaboration, willingness to innovate, take risks together are key. And then Rachel's picking up there saying, you know, does time for mentoring supporting come down to funding to schools and number of teachers? And do we need to think, differently about these aspects you can see you know these are all questions that I think we need to be asking I think so too and you know I think Rachel yeah I think it does I think it comes down to available um people available colleagues to to provide that support um but I do think there is a story there too about what do we what do we promote so we promote stories of teacher leadership sometimes in leadership roles rather than, you know, uh, I'm an experienced teacher and what I want to do is support beginning teachers coming in through my school and supporting their introduction to the profession as being a highly valued skill to offer the, the system, you know, and it's mm -hmm. back to that individual connection with the system and how that all works together. Um, yeah, I think we've got lots of more conversations to have, Nicola, is what I think. I, I agree with you, definitely. I'm seeing things slowing down in the chat. Is there any other final points people want to raise um, before we bring the session to a close this evening? Oh, another one coming in. It's a really good point there about the issue of availability of jobs for yeah. post NQTs. I mean, we've seen that um that's been high on the agenda we've seen that over the past year and it's it, it's it's really difficult context for um our newly qualified teachers and i think it's something we need to look at as part of that as well absolutely and uh yeah and what kind of um career coaching is put in that space when you're having that moment of i've worked hard this is what I want to do. I've had tis and I've had that experience and now there is nothing for me. Yeah. Um, and, you know, how does the individual get support in that space to, uh, I suppose, not give up as well, you know, but to, to, to look broadly and, um, yeah, I'm, for another day, a great chat would be about um, coaching and what we mean by coaching collectively in the teaching profession and who has access to it and who does not, and if it should be a core part of being a professional teacher, having access to really strong coaching support. So, yeah, I think, yeah, and I, I mean, I think that's a good point to finish on, actually, and Rachel and Paul have an agreement on that point as well. If we've got support for new teachers, if that's not prioritised by funding and mental education, then that's something we should be arguing for. Mm -hmm. um, and we're starting to see pockets of that um, I know I've been involved in that myself, I've seen it at Strathclyde and, and elsewhere. So I think it is something we need to be prioritising and arguing for. I, I agree, Rachel, and Paul's agreeing with that. And that's a bit of a whole system approach because it is about arguing for the funding for the support where it's needed, not necessarily by the sector who's arguing for the funding, if that makes sense. It's about yes. looking at the whole system. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Pauline. Well, the chat to an end there um it's been a really interesting keynote uh, an, an excellent way to start off 
our um, CIRA conference 20, uh, 2021 um, with a keynote from you, Pauline. And the chat has been really interesting as well. I wish we could have spent longer going through them, but I'm aware as well of tea times looming. <laughs> So thank you, Pauline, so You're much really for welcome. your um, your keynote today. Really informative, really interesting. I do hope we can continue the conversation on. Please do on um, social media. Um, that's what we see our role as Sarah as part of. And um, please join in any other um, sessions by our networks across the rest of this week. As I said, you'll find all the details for that um, on the, our website and you can still register. So we look forward to seeing you at more events this week. And thank you very much, um, Stephen. Uh, Stephen, yes, because <laughs> Stephen, your name popped up on the screen. That's the problem. Don't, don't worry. I get <laughs> emails. Much, it's, it's, 